um, what you what you're currently what you're doing currently, uh, what you want to get out of this course. Those are three important things to me. You can say any other thing, your name, where you work. If you want to talk about your family, that's fine. But it's important to get your name, know what you're currently doing, and what exactly do you have in mind to get out of this course. So should we start in alphabetical order or, or should we should we start in an alphabetical order or uh, do you just want to take it take a call by yourself? Maybe we should do it alphabetical order so that we can be quick on it. Chioma, you want to get started? From my skin screen, you are the first person. So Chioma, do you want to introduce yourself to us, please? And tell us okay. a little bit about yourself. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Chioma Fanaka, and I am just trying to think. So I have worked over the last sort of decade in the charity sector working across different things for my last role that I've been doing is a diversity and inclusion specialist so facilitation um working with a range of stakeholders organizations and things I'm currently in between jobs actually so I'm sort of job hunting and that was my thing I was like should I go and look for scrum master roles or ADM roles or wait till this course is finished um so what I want to get out of this course is to be able to get into a role that allows me to utilize a lot of transferable skills that I have gained over the last decade or so and um, put it into becoming an ADM. So hoping to start sort of certification and job content very soon. So that's me. Um, should I call on the next person? I think my alphabet serves me. Is it K or L that goes first? Yeah, that should be Kemi. Thank you. Okay. You can Kemi. call call the next person. Thank you, Choma. Yes. Let's go for it, Kemi. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Kemi, David Akiyemi. I've worked in, in and around projects and programs and portfolios for a number of years, but I've increasingly found that my role overlaps with um, projects going digital or working with product teams, which has always fascinated me, which is why um, I'm looking to up level my career let's put it that way and I thought it's high time to really understand what product teams are all about and what's the difference between how they operate and your traditional project management or program management way of doing things that's what sparked the interest so from this course from joining um, signing up with Blue Sky I want to have a real good understanding of what the role is about and what skills I have that are transferable and just to get new skills so that I can sort of move within that area in terms of growing my career. And that's me. Um, next is Lorita. No, I think we, uh, on the screen, I think we've skipped Isaac. So I say I, so let's go with Isaac. Hi, is good evening, Isaac here. Okay, Isaac is here. I think it's well. I don't know. Maybe it's picking it the way people are coming in. So, you you go ahead, Isaac. Thank you, guys. Just just own it the way you're doing it. Thank you. <laughs> just pass it to the next person when you finish. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Isaac Young, and I currently work as a sales slash customer service representative. I do have um some experience in traditional um, waterfall uh, projects and I have a master's in management or project management. I'm looking to um, gain hands-on experience on project management and um, move my career into working full-time as I'm working full-time in various forms of projects. Thank you. Uh, sorry, before I go, what I hope to achieve is to... Oh, I said already. <laughs> sorry. And I would uh, be nominating Dell. Dell, if you're here, please unmute and... Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Delphin. I'm a buddy for the ADM, Agile Delivery Management Program, presently also still studying 
I have um, um, call it experiences in project management. Also did my scrum mastering by Blue Sky some months ago. So I do the best I can to give support to the new interns at all time. I was the project. I was the team lead of the ADM of of our set, and I still believe that I can always learn every day from the interns and still from my coach. Also in the Blue Sky community, I'm still there, and I will continue to be there. Thank you so much. Good to have you here, Dale. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Mr. laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go. Who are you nominating then? I don't know. I came a bit late. Let me just check on. Choma has spoken. Kemi. Okay, let, let's go to Loretta because we've missed out Loretta. Loretta. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, my name is Udra Loretta Ogbori. Uh, um, an ADM in terms. I currently am working as a um, teaching assistant. I've been a stay-at-home mom for years. I just decided to change my career. I had a friend uh, that is into BE, and she took me from BE, and uh, she gave me some link to go and watch. And in the process of watching those um, BE courses, I bumped into project management. I tried listening to it and I was kind of interested in, in project management. So I asked and she gave me the link to Blue Sky. I called and I registered. And here I am. I want to develop my skill. As I said earlier on, I want completely change of car my career. And honestly, I'm new to the whole system, ADM, IT, everything. I'm just new to it. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta. That's really good. Who are you nominating? Thank you. I'm nominating... Um, um, Chom has spoken. Um, Del has spoken. I don't know. Or we already know Ken. Ken is our mentor. Um, okay, I go. I go for Ken. That's the name I can see here now. I nominate Ken. Yes. Um, hi everyone. I'm Ken. Um, I'm actually one of the mentors supporting the ADMs, so I tend to have a good habit of just joining the class to see, um, you know, what assignments is going to be given to them, and that way I could support the team much better. Um, I'm a working PM, and I started from Blue Sky as a Scrum Master, and an ADM, and now a PM. So that's my background, and I work within the financial sector. Thank you. So I'm going to nominate Olu, Olu A. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Yeah. So let's go. Well done. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Femi. Hi, my name is Olu. And my background is in retail. And um, I have a bit of knowledge in project management. Um, and I'm looking forward to learning um, and upgrade my skills and also learn new new things about agile project management. Thank you. Thank you, Olu. Thank you for that. Thank you. So that leaves us with one person who you can nominate, right? Uh, uh, Omilani, I'm sorry. 
Okay, so Olu Yinka, Omilani, yeah. please. Thank you. My name is Olu Omilani. That's O O. I'm the last person. I currently work with the financial sector. Um, my background is in art, although I've, I have a bit of uh, a bit, you know, idea about project management back in Nigeria, and uh, my reason for joining this uh, training is just to enlarge my scope and to know more about how it works over here because I know there must have been more development regarding project management trainings. Um, I'm really wishing and my future plan is to be a project manager, an agile delivery manager, so to say. So that's why I'm here. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for the good introduction. And it's really good to know that most of the people that I have here are seasoned one way or the other. You might not be seasoned, but at least you, you're familiar with project management environment, except for Loretta, who, um, who said that she, Loretta, who said that she doesn't really have any experience or background when it comes to project management. And I'm really happy that you said that. And that's the reason this course is all in comparison. So Loretta, I don't want you to feel intimidated. Uh, it's, it's a learning environment. It's an environment where anybody from every walks of life, as long as um, you, you, you are educated, you can communicate properly. Uh, you should be able to find your way through. And um, one of the things I want to make sure that we do is good that Ken is on the call is to see that everyone here gets the support that is needed so that at the end of the day, if things are not clear, you are able to meet with your mentor to be able to get clarity. And if you feel that you still haven't gotten what you need, you feel free to, to get in touch. And it's also good that Dell is here. So Dell will also be able to support you guys and a um, few other people based on what they have learned before. So I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Femi Adidoni. Um, I'm a delivery manager. I'm a senior project manager. I'm an agile coach. Uh, I'm a program manager. And um, I've been in industry for quite a while. And um, I've had the privilege of also training pe many people. I believe I've trained thousands of people. And uh, to, I'm, I'm also privileged to say that uh, my candidates are doing well. I have candidates that I've trained some years ago that are now training, that have their own training schools, and they, they are all also doing exceptionally well. And some of them, when they came as well, had no background in project management. In fact, some for the first one, two, three months, everything we were doing was like Greek to them or Hebrew. And, um, but by patience, by being willing to learn, most of them are flying very high today. And for me, nothing gives me a greater joy to make to see that the people that I've gone through my training are doing well and they are doing exceptionally well. Um, I've worked across various sectors. I've worked with banks. I've worked with uh, supply chain. I've worked with data. Uh, as in data projects, data, uh, you know, uh, migration, data, whatever it is you want to talk about data or data sciences. Uh, I've, I've worked across that board. I've worked with government. Um, I've, worked, I've worked with insurance companies. And I, I think I've gathered few experiences that can be of help 
to people that aspire to get on this line and on the ladder. So I am open and I'm hopeful that this journey is going to be smooth. I will be honest with you, it's, it's not a ride in the park if what you are thinking is, oh, don't worry, I'm just going to get the, Femi is just going to dump it in my brain. And after one month or two months, I'm just going to become a delivery manager like that. I'm sure for those of you that have been in project management environment before, you would agree with me that um, it's not something like that. You've got work to do. And like I would always say to people, it's important that you get your hands dirty. But I can tell you that is highly rewarding. I can assure you that at the end of it, you would have joy and you'll be happy that you did if you commit yourself to it. Uh, I have testimony of people that were earning 10,000 per annum, 12,000 per annum before, uh, or 14,000 per annum, 20,000 per annum. I have testimony of some of them now earning over 70,000 per annum, over 80,000 per annum. And some of them earning 350, 400, 500 pounds per day. So nothing gives me a greater joy than to see people prosper because you're not going to take my job from me and I'm not going to take your job from you. It's The job market is wide and it's out there. And we have loads of people, loads of people that are getting support from other side of the world. And I think from this side of the world, it would really be good also to have great representation, which we already have. Now. But it's only just in the delivery management that many people have not been able to really step into. Some people have been able to step into Scrum Master role, but delivery management is a, is a bit higher for them. Um, some people are able to combine it. You'll find the element of that as we go on. So that's just a little bit about me. Any question from anyone before we get started? Any question? Okay. Can I get started, guys? Please confirm you can hear me. Loud and clear. Fantastic. Okay. Yes. Can, I, can everybody see my screen as well? Can you see my screen? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me do something. I want to be free. I might have to join to a time because I want it to be there. I'm afraid to talk with you guys. Just give me a little bit. So I believe you can all hear me now, right? Yeah. Can everyone yes, hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, good, great stuff. So um, what I have in front of me is uh, when we talk of agile delivery management, who is an agile delivery manager? Um, this person is a skilled person that focuses on making things happen. Uh, I believe this is somebody that makes sure that ensures that the teams have everything that they need to succeed. Um, a delivery manager is good at actually bringing the right team or the right set of people together and then giving them what they need to succeed. 
a delivery manager is great at managing stakeholders uh, and perhaps coordinating across multiple departments or multiple teams to remove impediments. So you might find that a delivery manager is more than just one person that, or is more than just somebody that sits on a team and just feel, oh, I have a team. I'm managing my team. A delivery manager, when we talk of delivery manager, delivery lead, uh, senior delivery manager, you find those people operating on like a program level where they have projects, where they have scrum masters, where they have other people working under them. Now, if you go to government sector, in government sector, they, they refer to scrub masters. Now, they don't call, the government sectors really don't want just scrub master for the sake of scrub masters anymore. They want people that have delivery management skills as scrum masters. Why? Because they do not want people that would only come just to move tickets just to say, oh, I can do daily stand-up. They want more than people that can do just daily stand-up. They want people that will be able to do planning with the team, to be able to say, this is the product my team is working on, and X, Y, Z amount of things will be ready at X, Y, Z of time, which means, you know, they can do planning. They can manage stakeholders. They can do resource management. Does that make sense? And they can work across board. They are more than somebody that would just sit on one side, but they understand the development of projects and moving from project to product, just as one of you have said, and now understanding why products is different to projects. We do projects to get product. But when we talk about product now, in digital man, digital world or digital transformation world, product is a continuous thing not something that where we gather people now and the moment we finish the project, they just go. Product is beyond that. Product is, product is upscaling of the initial work that we have done in such a way that we can have it continuous. But we get to that as we go on, all right? So when we now put Agile into it, now it's important for us to be able to marry these together to see that when we say agile delivery management, there is the element of agile that you need to know. And when we talk of agile, we're talking of development that requires iterative work, incremental approach, and perhaps maybe some set of lean approaches into streamlining and accelerating the delivery of the work that you're doing. All right? So in unpacking that, what, we're, what I'm trying to say is this. Agile, we, we would define that. You need to understand the concept of Agile as an Agile delivery manager or as an AD or ADM or APM. Agile project manager, Agile delivery manager, you need to understand the concept of Agile. And that's what differentiates you from just the regular project manager. We would treat that. We would treat project management and we would treat how ADM comes into this. Okay? All right? So we talk about the application of knowledge, standards, regulations, understanding of project environment, and some of the other skills core skills, soft skills, hard skills that you would need. Part of those would be the agile and lean practices. A little bit of commercial management, communication. You need to have communication skills. You need to have financial management skills. 
life cycle perspective, for example, when we talk about product life cycle, project life cycle, it's important that you have a little bit of understanding of some of these things. And it's not something that you just gain once. It's a continuous learning. All right? So you've got to be somebody that has the skill to maintain delivery momentum within team. And you are somebody that also wants to make process work. You can plan. And you can understand what we call team dynamics and how to make people collaborate effectively together. So it's got to be that you have interpersonal skills where you can influence people, you can lead, you can motivate people, you can negotiate, and you have problem-solving skills. These are part of the things that we expect that as you go on on this journey, you will pick, you will learn, and if it's not clear, you'll be able to come back to say, I, I need more understanding about this. This is not clear to me. All right? So now... I want you to know that this requires practical experience, as I said. And that's why I said it's not just a walk in the park. It's not just a, something that is only theoretical based. It's got to be something that you're willing to also get involved in projects, get your hands dirty, work with teams that you will be assigned to, and make sure that you get what you are supposed to get out of this. What's in it for you? Yes, you will be operating on the management level. You will earn good money. Averagely, I think the minimum salary that you will see a delivery manager being offered now, or let's say the, 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 the average salary, let's not say minimum. The average salary should be about 65. We have delivery managers that are earning 90,000, 100,000, over 100,000. 70,000, and so on and so forth. So when you look at that, you see that, <clears throat> is, is this what I want? Yes. And that should push you to give it all it takes to get you where you want to be. Okay? So you can plan for a better future. You can own good homes. You can have a nice car. And you can have savings for the future. All right? So if you look at it, like I said, the average salary as at last September is, is about 65000 Okay? So some of the things you will learn, apart from the things that I've mentioned earlier here, under the delivery management, will be the introduction to project management in the course outline. We will learn about, you know, why do we need to do that? And some of the principles of project management. You will learn about Agile. You will learn about phases of project management, some tools that we use, you know, and so on and so forth. Okay? Any questions so far? Any question? None so far. Thank you. Fantastic. So let, let's start. Let's start with project. For those of you, um, one of you said, is, is studying, he has master's in project management, right? You have master's in project management, okay? And I'm happy for those of you that have had decades of experience in project management and ex environment as well. That's really good. To be honest, it, it, that makes my life easier. But I'm going to make sure that we blend this with Lorita that needs help to be able to come up to speed to where you guys are. So feel free, if you feel what I'm teaching you is too basic, let me know. If you think it's too hard to crack, also let me know. Is that okay, everybody? So okay. when we say, I know some of you have heard Prince 2, Prince 2, Prince 2. What does it mean to you? What is Prince 2? I want you to participate. What is Prince 2? The project management certification. Okay, thank you. But what does it stand for? It stands for um, project in a controlled environment. Okay, fantastic. Um, is that sorry? 
who, who, who was that? I want to know who, who gave. Oh, Isaac. Fantastic. Isaac, that's good. All right. So when we say Prince, Prince starts for, let me let me just type it. Does everybody understand what he said now? Yes. It stands for project and controlled and by Romans. All right. That is typically that is Prince. That's what it stands for. Does anyone know why? Isaac, do you know why we have Prince? Does Honestly, anyone know no, why? No. Okay. All right. So when we talk about Prince, Prince is one of the um it was just something that was put together to be able to manage projects in the palace. It was for the aristocrats to manage various projects in the Buckingham Palace and in some other places. They just wanted to be that there are sets of things. You would see that now you have different ISO, ISO 2000 and something, ISO 1995, ISO all sorts of things, right? A project was put together, when we say Prince, Prince was put together uh, so that there could be a way to make sure that projects don't fail for the aristocrats. And that's why that time it was called Projects in Controlled Environment. So they started to put some of this together to say, let's have a pattern. Let's have a way to be able to measure success. Let's create checklists to say, once you do this, then you can move to this. Once you finish this, we don't want anything to fail. You know that I'm sure some of you would testify to the fact that our late queen was somebody that was very, very, um, um, uh, she, she was very particular about things. You would all agree with me. She wants to make sure that everything succeed. And she, she, she was exceptional. Now, these were part of the things that was formed to manage the project in the palace. Now, when other people outside, organizations outside, were now looking for how to make things work for them, this was how this got introduced to other companies. Either you are in building, you are in software, construction, manufacturing, something now got to help them to be able to manage stages of how to deliver projects so that money would not be wasted and time would not be wasted. And that's why we call that Prince 2. Project in controlled environment too. Does that make sense, guys? Right. Now, so and this now got adopted by various organizations. And that's why you see that many people for many years, I'm sure some of you, you would have, oh, Prince 2. I want to do Prince 2. I want to do Prince 2 certification. I want to do that. that that's the reason for it. They want to make sure that you understand how those processes work. Before anybody can say we want to con co we want to uh, commit our projects into your hands, because they don't want projects to fail. Now it happens that in the nineties, as it was getting into the late nineties, some software developers started to see that this thing is not really working for us as it should work. They felt, you know what? This thing is failing. Why? They felt it was failing because of the waterfall approach of it. That's why we call it waterfall. We call it waterfall because once you start from the top, once you start with a phase, you complete that phase before you move to the next phase. But you cannot go back to the phase you've started. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. 
Yes, it's not. So we, we have different phases whereby we would say, before you start a project, oh, there must be a time where you would uh, have a set-up meeting. Oh, you set up meeting. Oh, you want to gather requirements. Okay, before you do anything, make sure you gather requirements. We want to make sure you've gathered all the requirements. You have everything that needs to be done about that project. When you finish gathering requirements, that's when you now go into analysis of it. After analyzing it, you are not, you've gotten approval for your requirement. That's it. The moment you do that, then some would say, oh, let's design. We've gotten our requirements. Let's just design what we want to do. And they do the design. And once they've done the design, you cannot tell them this design is wrong the moment you've given approval. Because once they design it, they will tell you we've designed based on the requirements you have given us. And the moment the design is approved, what's going to happen? The developers will start to develop based on the design that has been given to them. Now, it makes it difficult for you to now go back to say, you know what, I want to, I want to alter something in that design. Oh, the requirements I gave you three months ago, I want to change something there. They will tell you, no, sorry, you can't do that. Why? Because if you change that requirement, we have to start the design all over again from the beginning to the end. Does this make sense? So because of that, that's the reason some developers started to say, you know what? We think we may need to step away from this and look for an alternative way that can help us, that we can go back and forth and make sure that we're getting changes based on what is happening. If you are following me, let me know. If this is hard, let me know as well. So Agile did not start yesterday. It's not a trademark. Agile is not a trademark, as some of you would think. So Agile is, is just a set of ideas. So there are some days that I have here. If you look at 1910s to 1940, there were people that were practicing lean and flexible manufacturing. Because one of the Agile's goal is to improve the speed and quality of value of delivery, isn't it? So you would see that this had started. Some organization, if you look at Toyota, you know, originally it was called Toyota, you know, if you look at many other organizations that have started before Toyota, you know, because of time, I might not be able to give you details of history on them. But these are people that have been practicing these things before now. So somebody like Frederick Taylor, you know, uh, 1911, you know, uh, that told his managers to analyze the workers' suggestion and told them, you know, don't just, don't just, don't just do things because you want to do it. Call your managers. Call the workers. Let the workers give you suggestions. And if the suggestions add values, let's put it into produ production. Let's not just base it on what we think. These are some of the ways that things have started to evolve before it gets to those people. Does, does that make sense, guys? 1940, Toyota went to America. They wanted to learn, but they got there. What they wanted to let from Ford, they couldn't learn it. They couldn't find the kind of inspiration that it, it was from one uh, one supermarket, big store called, you know, Piggly Wiggly. That was where they got the idea of people working in a bit of an agile way. And they took it back, made it better, started to work iteratively. All right. So around 1970s to 1990, Agile started to take shape. But the manifesto took place 2001 when those developers met, all right, and um, at the Silicon Valley. 
where they met and they had the conference and they said, you know what, we, we can come up with something that can help us to be able to deliver better. All right? So now in our world today, many organizations are doing what we call digital transformation. You all know what digital transformation means, right? Do we know what digital transformation means? Perhaps you could explain to us. Okay. So when we talk of digital transformation, it's not, see, it, it's not, it's, we make it big word, but the concept of digital transformation is the ability for you to make your process is easier to be able to automate the way you work, to be able to reach your customer 247, and to be able to save costs. Digital transformation aims on what we call customer centricity. Everything that we want to do in digital transformation is to see how do we make the life of our customers better. And making the life of your customer better may start with your workers. Automating the way your workers do their jobs. Ensuring that, okay, if 20 people were doing this before, if I get machine to start to do it, how many people would I need? Maybe just two. I'm sure most of you would remember 15, 20 years ago, when you used to go to bank, what happens when you go to banks 20, 15, 20 years ago, what was happening? How do you, how do you, how do you make transactions in banks? How do we do that? You'd have to fill up a slip and then they would make some phone calls or find a way to debit and credit to you. Thank you. You have to fill up slips. You remember those times that you have to take checks to the bank, you pay your check and it will take five or six, seven working days before your check can mature. You remember that? We have banks today that you take check to them that same day. You don't even need to take the check. You only need to snap the check and upload it on your portal. And that same day, you, you get your, your, your money. So, these are some of the things that, you know, organizations start to look into. How do we make the life of our customers better? There was a time when people would have to go and they would queue for a long time so that they can get people to attend to them. You have to go to the bank to get money out. You have to go to the cashier. You want to withdraw money. You have to go to the bank to withdraw money. You want to pay in money, you have to go into the bank to pay in money. Now, at that time, there was no way for you to make transfer online. It was difficult. You couldn't just say, oh, all right, once I get to the bank, I don't need to talk to anybody. I just go to the machine and I do all my transaction on the machine. Now you can virtually do almost everything that you want to do with the machine. It's got its advantages, it's got its disadvantages, but it's saving the organization a lot of money. Overhead costs. And it's reducing some of the elements of human errors. So when we talk of digital transformation, it's a journey for every company. And though they have various desired generation you know destination that is unique to everybody but they want to plan it they want to make sure that it gets done and they want to make sure not just that it gets done they want to make sure that it's customer focused they want to make sure that you know what they are doing is what would please the customer and that's why you find so many applications coming up now you find so many organizations transforming and doing this and doing that. Now, where, where, where are we going with this? Where we're going with this is you cannot do digital transformation without the flexibility 
of knowing what your customer wants. Does that make sense to everybody? What did I say? Yes, sir. Is somebody talking? Yeah, you said what did yeah you it say? makes sense, okay. Femi. So, so it's not possible. You cannot do digital transformation without the flexibility of carrying your customers along. And that's why we spoke about, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, either uh, search functionality, social media strategy, the video streaming, email strategy, the display. What you want is to be present and you want to stay present at the right moment to capture the customer's expectations. So there was a time that companies, organizations were in charge of what they give to customers. But who is in charge now, guys? Who is in charge now? Talk to me. Customers, customers are now in charge of the buying process. What do I mean by that? Before you buy anything now, guys, what do you do before you buy anything? And you how many of you still go a lot, you still go a lot to the shops to buy? Do you all still go to the shop to buy everything you need? Not at all. Not as okay. yeah. Where do you buy your where do you do your shopping mostly now? Online. 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 Before you shop online, what do you do? Do you just shop? You research, you read, you read sample reviews, around. You read Customer reviews, ratings. you do a lot of research, search Google, Fa search on different platforms. Fantastic. You research, you do it. so part of your research would include review, customer review, right? Yeah. When you see that organizations are hiring delivery manager, they are hiring project manager, agile project manager, they are hiring scrum masters, they are hiring developers, they are not stupid, guys. They know that except the change, change will change them. Where is Blockbuster, guys? Where is Blockbuster today? Down under. Where is Blackberry today? <laughs> Down under. Where is Nokia today? Struggling. Do you know why? They refuse to innovate. They, they refuse, refuse to, to digitally up. transform when they were supposed to. They were making things that they think customer would need. They were not making things that customers were asking for. There was a time that BlackBerry was the best in the entire world for business transaction, for business messages, for, you would all agree with me, right? Yeah. But where, where are they today? Nobody needs them anymore. So that's why, you know, <laughs> customers are now in charge of the buying process. We cannot afford now to say, listen, we have gathered the requirements. That's it. We don't want to hear anything you want to say anymore. Start the design. And they start designing. And after designing, you start to develop. Anything can come up at any time. Guys, the speed at which technology is advancing now is alarming. Isn't it? AI has taken over. Machine learning has taken over. There are so many things now that we do with data that honestly, it will blow your mind if you know. And these are all things that we're trying to do to make sure that everything that the organiza or organizations are doing takes customers into perspective. Government is transforming. 
post office, the Department of Works and Pension, Home Office, uh, HMRC, everybody is digitally transforming now. Otherwise, they will pack up. You know, there was a time that that uh, Royal Mail was was going to go down completely. Do you remember, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes. If they didn't digitally transform, Royal Mail would have been a forgotten or a forgotten story by now. So that's why organizations want something adaptive. So you see that even organizations that do not understand what agile means, they want to talk agile. They want to speak agile. So as a delivery manager, you need to understand it. And I'm glad that most of you here said that you've done Scrum Master certification. You've gone through Scrum Master certification. Is that correct? Looking forward Is that correct? to it. Pardon? No, not everyone. I don't. Looking forward to looking achieving forward. certification, sir. So, what is what is agile? When we talk about agile, what is it? What does it mean to you? Agile is um, an incremental and reiterative process of achieving your goal. Okay. Thank you, Isaac. Anybody else? What is agile? When we say Agile, what does it mean to you? Talk to me, guys. I don't want you to keep quiet on me. Um, it's, a, it's a type of um, methodology or project uh, management process you often find in um, product development that allows you to continuously build and iterate and um, have opportunities to interact with the end user to be sure that you're building in increments and all and able to adapt what you're building to suit the end product that the users actually want. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm glad at least, I'm glad that some of you, you know, have idea of it. So anyone else? Anybody else? I guess Agile is a methodology. It's, it's a okay. type of project management tool um, where which is used to develop product, develop um, and get projects through, I think. Um, but it goes up increment and it's okay. integrated as well. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Can I if you can see what I'm showing, like I said, when we talk about Agile, there are two perspectives to it that I want you to learn today. There is being Agile. There is doing Agile. We have Agile as a mindset, and we have Agile in practice. Some of you have mentioned the aspect of the practicing of Agile, but Agile itself is a mindset. It, it's a philosophy with an aligned set of values. about how to approach contexts that is, you know, the associated challenges to that situation and how you think you can achieve success with it. For you to be a successful delivery manager, you must have an agile mindset. What did I say, guys? Agile if mindset. If you're a delivery manager, you need an agile mindset. Agile mindset. And that's the difference between you and a traditional project manager. 
a traditional project manager works in manage and control environment. You remember when I started to talk about prints? Prince is what? Projects in what? Controlled environment. Environment. When we talk of agile, it's a mindset. It has the practices of doing to it, but you've got to understand, you've got to have that mindset of agile for you to be a successful delivery manager. Why? Because when I was mentioning to you about who a good delivery manager will be, you must be somebody that is able to create collaboration within team. You must be able to manage people. You must be able to solve problems. You must be somebody that can think out of the box. You must be somebody that can put things into context and be able to look at the associated challenges to that context and be able to get solution out of it. Does this make sense? Sense. But it doesn't yeah. stop there. You've got to be able to do it as well. And that's where the aspect of methodologies, framework, practices, tools, that's where that comes in. So in the mindset, you've got to first recognize that we live in a complex, ever-changing world. So when you get employed by an organization, and they want to force you to work in waterfall, if you want to succeed as a delivery manager, you've got to be able to point it out and say to them that, guys, if you want us to do this waterfall, it's going to fail. Why is it going to fail? Talk to me, guys. Why will it fail? Because waterfall doesn't um, evolve or change. It's quite set, written in stone or set in There's stone. There's no room for improvement. It's set in stones. It's not giving us room for improvement. It's trying to let us know that this is how we said we would do it. This is what we want to give you. Motorola has learned a very, a very hard lesson. You can see that Motorola is trying their best to make sure they come back to the market, right? Mm -hmm. They could have died. They could have died permanent death, just as BlackBerry. OK? So you have to recognize that we live in, a, in an ever-changing world. And then the two, the second part of it is to work out how to create value in better ways through applying knowledge and responding to that world. so that we can thrive and succeed. Working out values, working out ways to be able to do that, that's where the practices, that's where the doing comes in. So if I ask, if you ask me to define agile, I would tell you that agile is a mindset expressed by values, defined by principles, and it manifests itself through unlimited practices. All right, guys? Right. Am I still yes. speaking in English? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I want to be sure that I'm still speaking in English. All right? So, all right. So when you look at that, it's a mindset expressed by values, defined by principles, and it manifests itself through unlimited practices. If you now look at that, we need to break it down. We need to unpack it. In unpacking that, that's where we come to the values. That's where we come to the principles. That's where we come to the practices. And that's where we come to the frameworks under it. All right? So some of these things are things that you need to go back and really research and make sure you understand. When we talk of the values, what are the four key values of Aja? I need you to go back, make sure you understand it. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. We talk of individuals and interaction. We talk of collaboration. We talk of responding to change and respect for people. Those are core values of Agile. 
then when we talk of the behaviors that you find in Agile, you find transparency, you find inspection, adaption, you find empirism, you find trust, elimination of waste, delivery for fast feedback. We want to fail fast. And then we want to build in quality, QA, quality assurance. And we want to make sure that we're building organizational knowledge as well. And we optimize for the whole, not for, and not just for a sector, not just for a part, but for the whole. And the behaviors we find in Agiles are the valued center behavior, the user center behavior. We optimize for fast feedback. So when we now talk of numerous framework that you'll find, we get into that. But if we talk of the principles, here you will see some of the principles. I've tried to make the manifestos that I spoke about the other time. You'll still get to the other ones later. So we are, what Agile is saying is we are uncovering better ways of delivering value by doing it and helping others to do it. Through this work, we have come to value individuals and interaction over processes and tools. We have come to value customer collaboration over contract negotiation. We have come to value working solution over comprehensive documentation. We have come to value responding to change over following a plan. Now, listen to me. While there is value or there are values on the in the items on the right, what we are saying is we value the items on the left more. We are not saying that there are no values on the items on the right. And don't get me wrong, because these are part of the myth that people bring up when we talk about Agile. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah. Yes. So there are values on the things written on the right, but we value the things on the left more. We're not saying that we wouldn't have processes and tools. There are processes and tools. We wouldn't say that there is no contract negotiation. There will be, but we value customer, customer collaboration over that negotiation. And we're not saying that we wouldn't have documentation. As a delivery manager, you would need to have documentation done. You don't have a choice. But you value working solution above heavy documentation. And we're not saying that you wouldn't plan. But what we are saying is, we prefer that you respond to change over just following a plan blindly. If any of you remembers the war between German and French, all right? What do you think happened? Why did the French, why did they win that war? Why do you think they won the war? Because the German had won before, not once, not twice. And they thought, you know what? We won them before. We won them the second time. We're going to win them again. So the French people knew that they had failed before. They went back to the drawing board and they said, you know what? We, we're not going to show them all the skills we've got. We're going to start to show them bit by bit. And because of that, they eventually won the war. And the Germans were shocked to their bones. How many of you remember, you remember the final of the Olympic football? 19, was that 1998, right? Do you guys watch football? You remember that? Yeah, yeah, Nigeria, Brazil, right? Nigeria, Brazil. 1996. Do you guys know, do you remember what, was it 96 or 98? Do you guys remember what happened? Do you know what happened the first half? 
Do you know what the scores was? Yeah. Do you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. We, we were we were being defeated. I think it was uh, three goals to nil or three goals to one. It was three goals to nil. We managed to score one. Then the Brazilians gave us one more, and it became 4-1. It was 4-1 at the first half. What do you think would happen when you get 4-1 at the first half? What's going to happen with almighty Brazil? Is there any hope anymore? No. There wasn't any hope. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I know somebody that our father died because of that match. He had a heart attack the first half of that match. He carried his TV. You remember the TV those days? He carried his TV and threw it in a well. He was so pissed off. He said, these guys are disgraced. They are very disgraceful. And he carried the TV, threw it. He sustained a heart attack and he died. Wow. But guess what, guys? Would Do you want to know what happened the second half? Do you know what happened the second half? No. Nigerians came back with the almighty Brazilians. And before the Brazilians would say Jack, it became 4-2. Before they would check again to say, ah, what's happening? These guys, it became 4-3. Before they can look back to say, ah, what? 4 3, it became 4 4. Guess what? Nigeria won the World Cup. Wow. <laughs> Nigeria won it. But I can tell you if Nigeria had shown all its strength at the first half, do you think they would have won? Yes. Yeah. Not at all. Brazilians would have shown them Pepe. So, responding to change is critical if you want to be a good delivery manager. You've got to learn to be able to respond to change and be able, because something has gone wrong does not mean it can never be fixed. The person that died the first half the person will get to know in heaven that Nigeria finally won. Was it not too late? So, this is where we are. In project management, as a delivery manager, it's important for you to know that Agile Manifesto must be part of your watchword to be able to succeed. So when we talk of various methodologies, various frameworks that we have under Agile, you have them here. You have the lightweight approach. You have the fuller approaches. Under the lightweight, that's where we have Scrum. We have the Lean Software Development, Kanban. You have uh, Extreme Programming, which we call XP. You have Continuous Integration, Continuous Delivery. You have what we call the FDD, the TDD. But under the fuller one, you have what we call the Scrum of Scrums. And I know some of you would have known that. You would have been exposed to that. We have what we call Scrum at Scale. If you've heard that before, we have what we call Less. Less is part of is one of the fuller approaches of methodologies or framework that we follow now. And we have safe, which we call safe, you know, scaled agile framework. All right. We have that, which is discipline agile delivery. And you have a mixture of some of these things within what we do. All right, guys. Any questions so far? Got a question. Please go for it. So just in the last slide, you were talking about change. So is change management part of agile delivery um, management as well? Okay. Part of what you will learn here, you will learn change management, but not the deep part of change management. 
because change management is a different world in itself right now. But you will learn something that can give you a tool because you've got to know how to manage change as a delivery manager. As a scrum master, well, some scrum masters don't know how to manage change. But as a delivery manager, you must know how to manage change. As an agile project manager, you must know how to manage change. It's compulsory. Did I answer your question? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Any other question? Any other question? No questions from for now. Okay, I, I'll come back to some of these things later. But like I said, if you look at this, so when you look at it, we talk of the waterfall methodology where you have, you do your feasibility studies, you have your uh, requirement uh, uh, gathering, requirement analysis and specification, you have the design, then you do the coding and you do the testing and you then do the integration and system testing and then you go into maintenance. What you see here is once you leave one stage, you get to the next one, you don't go back. It's just like water coming from the top of a hill. I, I don't know. Maybe you guys can educate me if you've seen water that goes back on the hill after it's come down like this. Does it go back? It's guys, impossible. does it go it's back? Impossible. It's impossible to go back. Yeah. That's, the, that's the problem. That's the shortfall of waterfall because you're not able to go back. And that's why when we talk of mobile application development in our world, web application development in our world, uh, mobile website, data migration, most of these things require more than just something that you cannot go back to recheck. You've got to be able to recheck it. You've got to be able to know that, oh, this thing is it working. Is this what the customers are looking for? Oh, what are other people doing? What can we learn from what this other company has done? How can we make ours better? Some of the things you will notice in cars now, you will see that they are copying themselves, isn't it? If you look at mobile phones, most of the features, are they not copying themselves? Yes. 100%. Go to India. Go to China. There are so many names that you can't count. You only know of Samsung, right? You only... <laughs> there are so many names of phones. And all the features and the functionalities you are thinking about here, they have it all written there. So while we are looking at all those stages, Agile is saying something different. Because, and the argument is, this thing uh, didn't work many years ago when it started, especially when we talk of, you know, the, the, the way we do our planning. All right? When we look into burn down charts. All right? So if you look at Agile in comparison to this, what Agile is saying is, we want a typically time-boxed approach where we break a large, complex problem into smaller pieces using iterative and incremental development where we emphasize on client satisfaction. That is agile approach. Look at the traditional guy. What is he doing, guys? That traditional guy, what is he doing? Looks like he's pulling the entirety of what he's trying to get across the line all in one go. And what's the other guy on the right doing? Thank you for that. Great. The other guy on the right, what's he doing? He's broken his up into smaller segments. Um, Fantastic. So is broken is up into smaller segments whereby it can get feedback quickly. 
And that's why Scrum is very popular. Out of all the frameworks of Agile, Scrum is popular. Why? Because people can know what they want to get at what time they're going to get it. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So if you look at this, let, let me give you a comparison between them. Look at the product journey in Scrum. Compared to the traditional, what can you see? What can you see? Talk to me. What's the difference? The traditional um, traditional form of project management is straightforward from point A to point B, whereas the agile keeps moving in a in a multi-directional in multiple directions. Okay. Can you define your straightforward to us? So I'll say um, straightforward in the sense that it's planned, executed, and uh, delivered. Whereas the agile, um, there's there's planning involved, but it's not as heavy as traditional. And sorry, I'm I'm lost right now. I'm not concentrating. Okay, stay with me. Why are you lost? <laughs> uh, sorry, I think I'm I'm being distracted here. Ah, um, okay. Sammy. I, I don't want you to be dis distracted. Hello, Sammy. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the product journey. It it it's it's a step by step method from sprint from the starting point. You get to sprint one. After sprint one, get to sprint two before you get to the final product. Okay, why the, yeah. the, the why the traditional one is just from traditional product to the scrum product. There's no, I don't know. There's there's no step to follow. Once you finish tradition, just move to scrum. From scrum, you just move to client expectation. But with the product journey, you take it step by step. So if you don't finish sprint one, you can move on to the next sprint. I feel so. I don't know if I'm right. Okay. Well done. You've all tried. You've all done well. All right. If you look at this, what you have here, you would see that, see, the traditional product management, they have the same starting point, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Yes, they have the same starting point. Like I said, with traditional project management, once you start, you don't stop. You just keep going straight till you finish. And this is your final product. What do we find? This color of final product, what, what is this? What is this color saying? The client's not happy. Client is not happy. We move from this, we go straight to the end, non-stop. Now, the difference between this and Scrum is, look at it, Scrum starts from here, it goes from zero to sprint one. Do you know what happened after sprint one? They get a chance to demo to the client. Fantastic. They had the chance to demonstrate to the client, to the product owner, to business, to say, this is what we have done. And guess what they get? They get feedback from those people saying, oh, that's good. Or no, 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 no. That blue doesn't look bluish. That blue, why is that blue looking greenish? That's not what we ask you to do. What do you think is going to happen? The team would go back and fix it before continue to build other things so that when they get to spring two, they are presenting those two things together to the client and they are able to get another what? Feedback. And as they go to spring three, they are getting another feedback. Yeah. What's going to happen at the final product? The customer will be happy because they've been involved. They'll be satisfied. They'll be happy. Exactly. 
And that's why you see that the final product of Scrum says client expectation zone. Because at the end of it, what customer wants, they are able to get it. They've been a part of it. Unlike the one that you come to me and you say, oh, you want to be the house? Okay, what do you want? I want three bedroom flat. I want three bedroom house. Okay, da 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 da. Okay, it's going to cost you 150,000. 150,000. Okay, can I pay 130? Ah, 130 is because it's you. Okay, bring 130. And you pay the 130 and you sign an agreement and the person goes, and that is it. You tell the person, come back in six months or in one year. It's not the same as the one whereby every step of the way, customers are involved. That's the big difference between Waterfall and Agile. How this makes sense to you guys? It does, thank you. I think I'm gonna stop it here tonight. And I'm going to ask you to go back to study on what I have taught you tonight, to look into the recap of what we've done tonight. We've spoken, we've spoken about delivery management. We've spoken about agile uh, project management. We've spoken about digital transformation, why digital transformation is important. Then we've spoken about Prince 2, which is waterfall typically in nature. And we then spoke about Agile to say, this is the difference between Agile and Waterfall. Now, I want it to be that when you come next time, you are able to tell me the values and the principles of Agile. And I want you to be able to tell me some of the frameworks that we have in Agile and be able to tell me advantage and disadvantage, pick two. Tell me the advantage of one and the, the, the disadvantage of it and the advantage of the other one and the disadvantage of it. Is that okay? Could you repeat that again, please? All right. All right. From the last one that I said, I said, I need you to go back and learn about the Agile Manifesto that I've given you the 12 principles of Agile. And then I want you to look into the Agile practices that I said. Choose two out of them. I've given you this. You can choose Scrum. You can choose Kanban. You can choose Safe if you want. Tell me, what's the advantage of Safe? What's the disadvantage of Safe? What's the advantage of Scrum? What's the disadvantage of Scrum? And why would you rather do safe than just Scrum? Or why would you do Scrum instead of safe? Or why would you do Kanban instead of Scrum? Or why would you do Scrum instead of Kanban? Is it clear now? Yes. Is it clear, everybody? Yes, it is. Any question? All right. I'll catch up with you all on Thursday. So, sorry, Femi, can you wait behind one minute, please, if that's fine? And also Del and Sadiq, if you guys can wait behind, please, for a quick minute. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Femi. Yeah. Thank You're you welcome, guys. Thank you very welcome. Much, Mr. Femi. Really You're you. very welcome. Uh, Thank Femi. you, Femi.